It is a singular pleasure and honor for me to welcome you all to Addis Ababa today, Africa's rapidly transforming diplomatic capital for the 12th edition of the African Economic Conference, which the Economic Commission for Africa has the privilege to be co-hosting with the African Development Bank, the United Nations Development Program, the Regional Bureau for Africa. Permit me to start by expressing my gratitude to the government and the people of Ethiopia for so graciously accepting to host this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this year's conference is governance for structural transformation. Bringing these two very important concepts together to constitute the theme of this conference has been very deliberate, notably because of their centrality and importance in moving our continent forward towards the development trajectory envisioned in both the 2030 Development Agenda and Agenda 2063 to deliver on Africa we want. The fundamental reality is that the development and structural transformation are not an overnight phenomenon. Development results from long-term strategies, policies, and effective partnerships with various agents of the global, regional, and local production and innovation systems are needed. There are a number of areas where governance is an important and necessary condition for economic diversification, value addition, and transformation. Let me give you an example, a few examples of why we think that governance and structural transformation are intri intricately linked. First, in the area of resource mobilization. Today, Africa still lags behind all other regions in, the, in terms of resource mobilization. Latin America, overall fiscal revenue to GDP is about 22%. On average, in the OECD countries, it's 34%. In Africa, it's 19%. So despite the long periods of growth that Africa has experienced, we have not been able to raise our tax revenues to GDP, which implies that we cannot respond to the needs of the people. The informal sector, tax evasion, and illicit financial flows are important issues of governance the continent must address to accelerate its transformation agenda. In the area of infrastructure and energy, we all agree that without adequate access to energy, Africa will not be able to accelerate and sustain its growth process. However, today, over 600 million people on the continent do not have access to energy. Sub-Saharan Africa, according to a recent report, has only 300,000 kilometers of power lines, compared to an average of about 10 million in other continents. Access to energy is not due to lack of base resources. Africa's major hydro resources can produce about 283 gigawatts of energy. Less than 10% of this clean energy source has been tapped to date. Ethiopia, Niger, of course, and Guinea are a few notable examples. And here again, I want to commend the Prime Minister and the government of Ethiopia for having recently launched this weekend a huge and ambitious initiative to increase access to energy across the continent, which is being supported by all our institutions and the EDB that is giving about 100 million for this initiative.